Hello everybody on my book talk, or my people who, book talk, booktube, who like books. I've got a bit of a book haul for you, there's I think nine books here. So I've picked up a few in the charity shop, some are from my mum, they're all falling down so. Yeah, so the first one I got is Sophie Kinsella, I owe you one. So this one says, uh, Fixie Far can't help yourself, straighten a something object move in there, bury their stain, helping out a friend. She just has to put things right. It's how she got her nickname after all. So when a handsome stranger in a coffee shop asks her to watch his laptop for a moment, Fixie not over agrees, she ends up saving it from a certain disaster. To thank her, the computer's owner, Sebastian, scribbles her an IOU, but of course Fixie never intends to call in a favour. That is until her teenage crush Ryan comes back into her life and needs her help, and Fixie turns to Seb, but things don't go according to plan, and now Fixie owes Seb again, big time. Soon the pair are caught up in a series of IOUs from small favours to life-changing ones and Fixie is torn between the past she's used to and the future she deserves. Does she have the courage to fix things for herself and fight for the life and love she really wants? I do like Sophie Kinsella. There is another book. Um, it's actually on my red pile. So I obviously got it last month. So let me just uh, pull that out and then I can put it back and we'll talk about it in my wrap-up as well. Oh, sorry about that. We'll do that one in a minute. Uh, then I've got Danielle Steele, loving. This one was from my mum. She lived for the gilded world of his dreams. I say. Pampered, adored and adorable, Bettina Daniels was the golden girl with the world at her feet. She had youth, beauty and a glamorous lifestyle. Everything her father's love, fame and money could buy. Then, without warning, Justin Daniels was gone, and Bettina was left with a mountain of debts and a world full of strangers. Men who promised her many things, who tempted her with words of love. Bettina had to live her own life, weave her own dreams, reach out and seize a chance for loving. They're all right, they're my emergency books. I'm not really into those, but... Uh, then we got Lynn Andrews, um, Across the Summer Sea. This is a bit of historical fiction. Mary McGann's marriage has always been difficult, uh, thanks to her husband Frank's jealous nature. Only because the little money he does uh, he earns keeps food in the mouth of their three children does Mary put up with him. When persuaded she was flirting with a neighbour, Frank throws them all out on the street. Mary is desperate. Pawning in her wedding ring, Mary flees her family to Dublin. One of the few men to help her is Richard O'Neill, a handsome though solitary man. There's an attraction between them, but Mary's not looking for romance. When word comes that Frank needs her, she returns to Liverpool, doubting that the future holds anything for her but the hard struggle to survive. Though tragedy and danger are looming, a brighter horizon lies beyond if Mary's prepared to be strong and take the chances that come her way. That's more and more what I like. I like those ones. A quick sip of cola. Add it to the cans on my nightstand. I've got to take it downstairs. Big one here. This is Martina Cole. Faceless. Now, somebody has been sticking stickers over the back. Uh, I think this is Jennifer at her Nana's. So, 11 years ago, somebody was accused of killing her two best friends. She's released from prison. Life's moved on. Parents have disowned her. Children don't want to know. But some people out there watching, watching her every move, they know that she's out for retribution. So she's probably innocent then. Faceless by Martina Cole. Nice. Uh, new Arrivals at Mulberry Name. This book I got in in charity shop. Or at um, Pasco's charity shop. And look how nice it is. It's like it's practically brand new. A bit of crease on the cover. That's probably my mum. Again, a bit of historical fiction. 1943 Mulberry Lane, London. In the midst of another bleak winter, life is hard for the residents of the lane. When Rosa Merchant arrives at Mulberry Lane, she's carrying a secret that haunts her. How should she tell her landlady and the lane's matriarch, Peggy Ashley, that she is the daughter of a murderer? As Rose learns that she's amongst friends, she gradually learns to trust and even love. But when Peggy's estranged husband, Laurie, returns home for good, both Rose and Peggy's lives are once again turned upside down. Can they both find their way through the heartache to find happiness? Hmm. Sounds all right, doesn't it? It's by Rosie Clark. I got uh, Obsession by Susan Lewis. This is again one for my mum. Mass market paperback, a bit chunky. <coughs> so this one. Corrie Brown is an ordinary girl with extraordinary ambitions, determined to find a father she's never known. Her search takes her from a quiet Suffolk village to where she lives to a new life in London, a fast-paced television career and three people who come to dominate her life. 
Luke, charismatic, blonde and charming, is the only one to make Corey feel welcome at TWTV and the only one to recognise her talent. Christoph, an internationally famous film director, is the man who teaches her everything he knows about sex and passion. That's the boring part of the book. And Annalise is her boss and friend. A woman about Corrie knows a secret that must never be revealed. Three colleagues, all of whom are to play an important role in Corrie's search for love and success. One of whom intends Corrie's ultimate destruction. Then we've got a sort of like kid's book, I think it is. Uh, Amber's Secret, a story of love, friendship and courage by Anne Pilling. It's just a nice and thin one. Did you know, said Amber one day to her friend Sally, that if you pick up the phone and ring Appleford 616, you can talk to God? Sally stared. Amber was a gypsy child. She knew six, She knew secrets. It's coronation year 1953. Sally's mother has been taken seriously ill is in the hospital. Her father is abroad and her big brother is doing his national service in the army. And Sally finds herself all alone and having to stay with grumpy old Mrs Spinks next door when something absolutely terrible happens. So terrible that she can't tell anybody about it. It's quite weird, 1953 coronation year, and here we are in 2023 and it's coronation year as well, so I might read this soon. Then we've got Judith Krantz, I'll take Manhattan. And turn it into an Isle of Joy, I presume. Um, and this one says, Maxi Amberville is bold, brash and beautiful, a non-stop powerhouse with a passion for life's finest in excess. At 29, she's already enjoyed three husbands on two continents and holds court in a lavish apartment. A willful hedonist, Maxi discovers that her talent for lust is matched by a hunger for hard work. When she learns that her late father's magazine empire is about to be sabotaged by her uncle and sold to the highest bidder, Maxi demands control of Buttons and Bows, the failing fashion trade weekly that was her father's first magazine. She enlists the aids of her hot-blooded ex-husband and enjoys the input of their sassy daughter, Angelica. With them and a band of dedicated editors, Maxi turns her unbridled drive for excess into a day and night labour, transforming buttons and bows into B&B, &B, the most outrageously original and daring woman's magazine in the country. Well, that sounds actually quite interesting. Two more. So the one I read and I forgot is obviously Jodi Pico's My Sister's Keeper. Do I need to read you this? You'll know what it's about. This is about Anna who decides to serve Sue for medical uh, emancipation because she's a designer baby created to help save her sister Kate who has been diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer, of leukaemia. And it's the story of what happens and yeah, more about that in my wrap up. Last book is book two in the uh, Amelia Peabody Murder Mysteries by Elizabeth Peters. This one is The Curse of the Pharaohs. I do love these paperbacks. I love the pictures on them. Um, I want to read this one soon. The perfect recipe for splendid entertainment, says The Guardian. So, hmm, might be good. When a cry of help goes out from a colleague in distress, Amelia Peabody is not only too happy to drop everything in England and travel out to Egypt to help. The colleague in question is Lady Baskerville, who husband Sir Henry has died suddenly under bizarre circumstances at the site of a tomb in Luxor. Little wonder then that in the newspaper proclaiming the curse of the pharaohs has struck. On arrival in Luxor, Amelia and her husband Emerson find the camp in a disarray and the workers terrified by the appearance of an apparition Amelia promptly christens the Lady in White. Yet this does not deter her from seeking the truth behind Sir Henry's death. Armed with nothing more than her trusty parasol, Amelia sets about bringing order from chaos and herself must cling much closer to danger. I love these books. Anything to do with ancient Egypt, you know I love. And these fictional stories set there are absolutely brilliant. Those are the 10 books I bought in April. Look out for one. There might be one at the end of May. I've got three books that have arrived and one book on the way. So there's probably going to be more than that by the end of the month. I'm sure there is. So I will see you in the next video very, very soon.